the moon is full, more crimes of violence occur. Arrests have been known to increase, as well as admissions to mental hospitals. Firemen report an unusually high number of fires and freak accidents. Emergency personnel in hospitals brace themselves for increased caseloads. Bizarre statements and traumatic actions by usually rational people are attributed to moon madness. Why? What strange influence does the moon have on the behavior of man? The three wise men journeyed from the east to Bethlehem. According to some biblical scholars, they observed the rising of a star and came to pay homage to a newborn king. In recent translations of the New English Bible, the three wise men, the Magi, are called astrologers. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. I'm in Aries. My, I have a Libra rising. My Venus is in Pisces. My moon is in Cancer. Uh, I know an awful lot about it because every man that I like, I'd be sure and check out what his sign is first before I get, you know, too involved. I'm a Sagittarius and I don't know that much about um, astrology. Yeah, I do know. I'm an Aries and I think it's fun to read my horoscope every morning in the paper. I'm a Libra and I think it's, I'm not real in favor of it because I think it gives people an out, tells them what to do and that's just what they want to do. My sign is Virgo. I don't think it has much scientific fact because I don't think anybody has ever proved anything. I'm a Leo, and I wish I knew more about it. I really don't. I think it's terrific, um, very interesting, and uh, I just wish I knew more about it. And I'm an Aries with Scorpio rising. For most of us, that's as far as it goes. We know our sign, but little beyond that. What is astrology? Why do 32 million Americans express a belief in it? Simply put, Astrology is the forecasting of events on Earth based on the relationship between the stars, the sun, the moon, and the other planets. As above, so below. Perhaps astrology began as a form of survival. Cavemen looked up into the night sky, trying to determine when to hunt, when to store food, when to seek shelter from wintry storms. Years passed, and early man realized that the weather, the moon, the sun, and the stars moved in predictable cycles. Ice Age bone markings suggest that prehistoric men were aware of the cycle of the moon over 32,000 years ago. In the more recent past, star groupings were identified by assigning them the names of earthly creatures. Cancer, the crab. Aries, the ram, Leo, the lion, Sagittarius, the archer, Scorpio, the scorpion. The formalized study of astrology originated in Mesopotamia at least 3,000 years before Christ. From there, it spread to Egypt, India, China, and throughout Europe. The Egyptians devised a calendar, dividing the yearly cycle into 12 houses. Knowledge of the future was considered a potent weapon. Only those of royal birth were permitted to learn the mysteries of the heavens. The great temples and pyramids along the Nile incorporated astronomical calculations in their design. At that time, Astronomy and astrology were considered one and the same. An astrologer charted the movement of planets 
and interpreted their influence on the affairs of man. Four centuries before Christ, the Greeks combined mythology, geometry, and Mesopotamian astrology into a complex system. In the second century AD, the Greek mathematician Claudius Ptolemy accurately measured planetary movements. His prolific research dominated both astrology and astronomy for 1,500 years. Meanwhile, astrology flourished throughout the Roman Empire. Moses, father of the Jewish people, practiced astrology. In Bet Alpha, Israel, a synagogue built in the 6th century AD has the zodiac as the centerpiece of its mosaic floor. Unusual celestial activity apparently heralded the birth of Christ. Three times in the same year, Saturn and Jupiter moved closely together, forming a conjunction in the constellation of Pisces. According to some of the newer translations of the Bible, the Magi were astrologers. The first conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter supposedly started them on their long journey. The second guided them west, and the third occurred when they arrived in Bethlehem. Astrology was condemned by early Christians as pagan ritual. Today, the most extensive astrological library in the world is found, of all places, in the Vatican. Astrology and astronomy, of course, are very closely related, although there have been many heated battles and debates, and I've been... Uh... Sidney Omar is one of America's leading astrologers. His books on the subject have sold over 20 million copies. Uh, I remember one time when uh, MGM was doing a movie called The Heavenly Body, starring Hedy Lamarr and William Powell, where William Powell played the astronomer, and his wife in the movie, Hedy Lamarr, uh, played the astrologer. Well, they had to hire two technical advisors for that movie. It turned out that the astrologer was being paid three times as much as the astronomer. And when the astronomer found this out, he stormed off the set. And I suppose perhaps that symbolizes the peak that exists between astrologers and astronomers. But I always compare it in, in this manner. I think uh, an astronomer uh, is a librarian. He knows where all the books are placed. He knows the positions of the planets. Uh, but the astrologer reads the books. He interprets those positions. Uh, from the beginning of recorded history, astrology has been with us. And astronomers uh, branched out into their own field the early astrologers would hire apprentices to do the mathematical work so they could get the proper positions of the planets. Then the uh, astrologer, the master astrologer, would interpret those positions. Well, the apprentices eventually branched out into their own science based on mathematics, and they called that science astronomy. Now, why the two should continue to battle, I don't know. That's a psychological study in itself. Dr. George O. Abel, professor of astronomy at UCLA, has debated the value of astrology with Sidney Omar on more than one occasion. Astrology is an ancient religion with no basis whatsoever. And yet in more than 15 years of investigation, I have found that astrologers often try to justify their claims with other kinds of celestial effects, but those are usually wrong. Now, take a few examples. Moon madness. More than 7,500 murders, suicides, admissions to mental hospitals have been found to have no relation whatsoever to the moon. Or tides. The tidal force exerted on me by all of the planets combined is many tens of millions of times weaker than the force of this book upon me. Or planets and weather. Although there have been unsuccessful attempts to relate planets to solar activity like sunspots, Nobody claims to predict Earth weather with planets. If we could do that, the weather service would have been out of business many years ago. Yet, many millions of people fall for astrology. It is said that even Adolf Hitler did. But I hope you do not. Throughout history, however, the misuse of astrology has been legendary. Rudolf Hess encouraged Adolf Hitler to plan battle strategies with it as they approached World War II. Rudolf Hess and Joseph Goebbels pressed the leading astrologers of Germany into service. Their early predictions of victory were propagandized into battle cries. As 
Hitler's charts grew increasingly pessimistic, the astrologers were arrested and shipped off to concentration camps. Karl Kraft, Hitler's personal astrologer, died en route to Buchenwald. Louis de Waal, originally an astrologer for the Third Reich, followed the advice of his own chart and fled to Great Britain. De Waal served Winston Churchill and Britain's strategists throughout World War II. He knew the methods used by Kraft and other Germans and predicted dozens of astrological strategies employed by Hitler's forces. DeWall saw danger signs in the chart of President Roosevelt in 1945, the year FDR suffered a fatal stroke. He also charted an ominous conjunction of Mars and the star Algol for August 1945. On the day of the conjunction, the first atomic bomb exploded over Hiroshima. Astrologers have predicted many major crises in history. Often, however, their warnings have gone unheeded. I'm an Aquarius, and uh, it's pretty general. It applies in a lot of situations, but the sign can fit almost anybody who thinks about the sign. Aquarius, perhaps, is the most intriguing sign of the zodiac. Aquarius is associated with the planet Uranus. Astrologers call Uranus the planet of surprise. And if you're with an Aquarius person, you can be sure of one thing, you don't know what's going to happen next. I'm a Cancer, and I'm not quite sure what I feel about astrology. Some things seem to be true, and some things don't. And Cancer is related uh, to the moon. Cancer, so people are very emotional, and they're changeable where their affections are concerned, but they're extremely loyal to family members. A uh, Cancer persons harmonize very well uh, with uh, Virgo, with Taurus, with Scorpio and with Pisces. I'm a Leo, and I found out that Leo is the strongest sign in the world. And we are born to be natural leaders, and that's what I am. Leo is the showman of the Zodiac, very creative. And if you're having a party, you better put a Leo on your invitation list. My sign is Scorpio, <laughs> and I don't know too much about astrology, but when people ask me what my sign is, um, and I say Scorpio, they, they go, ooh, like they, like they avoid me, so, except for men. I've found in my experience that the most feared sign of the Zodiac is Scorpio. People tend to feel that Scorpios are envious, intense, uh, uh, can be jealous, and they're very passionate lovers. A psychologist at London University, Dr. Hans Eisenk, decided to uh, explode astrology once and for all by taking these basic claims and disproving them. Uh, he took, a, he made up 2,000 questionnaires and using a computer and other data in the modern psychologist's laboratory, he uh, decided that he would check people who were born under the water signs and people who were born under other signs. Well, much to his astonishment, he found that indeed, the water signs were very emotional. He said it can't be, but it is, at his clinic in London, Dr. Eisnick also tested the zodiac signs for introversion and extroversion. According to the astrologers, if you arrange the signs in order from Aries through Pisces at the other end, uh, then the people born under the odd-numbered signs, that is Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, and Aquarius, uh, would tend to be extroverted and the people born under the even-numbered sign, that's Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Pisces, uh, would then be introverted. And this is precisely what, in fact, we found in our sample. Extraversion really refers to outgoing properties of a person. He's sociable, impulsive, happy-go-lucky, likes to mix with other people, likes to go to parties and so on, and the introvert is the opposite of all. He likes to sit at home, read, rather than go to parties, uh, and so on. So these are quite well recognized and quite easy to test in a questionnaire. We put it through the computer and did a statistical analysis of the data, 
And as it happened, they bore out the astrological prediction very well, which rather surprised me, of course, but uh, there are the results. And that's what got me interested in this. Astrology has commercial applications in many phases of business, including predictions of stock market trends. According to J.P. Morgan, millionaires don't use astrology, but billionaires do. John Henry Nelson, a weather consultant for RCA since 1926, uses astrological principles to predict storms which might impair shortwave communications. Nelson's predictions are amazingly accurate. When I announced in 1951 that I had found a positive correlation between planetary angles and the behavior of shortwave radio signals. I started quite a controversy in the field of astrology and in the field of astronomy. Inadvertently on my part, my statement that the planets affect the ionosphere of the Earth was looked upon as a boost for their area of interest. I was amazed shortly after that when I learned through letters I received from astrologers that Ptolemy almost 2,000 years ago had said the same things that I was saying. In other words, uh, modern research substantiated his ancient claim. He came way before his time. Using Ptolemy's principles, John Henry Nelson successfully charted storm paths 15 months in advance for a NASA space launch requiring ideal weather. The late Dr. Eldon Tice of the Methodist Hospital of California in Los Angeles actually regulated the personnel on the maternity ward by the phase of the moon. He found that when there is a full moon, the maternity ward was very busy. More babies were born during the full moon. Now, Dr. Edson J. Andrews of Tallahassee, Florida, wrote in the Tallahassee Medical Journal that when tonsillectomies are performed during a full moon, there's more chance of post-operative hemorrhaging than at any other time of the month. So Dr. Andrews says, save full moon nights for romance, not for surgery. The incidents that we have are way beyond normal. We have all sorts of things happen in regards to people doing things a little stranger than they usually do, going out of their way to get in trouble, uh, just really having a problem coping. As an ambulance driver, I found that you'd see a different type of patient as well as more patients in a given night. You'd see a lot more trauma, and the trauma would be a bit more profound than normal. For some reason, other medical problems would appear exaggerated. It would be hard to describe. You'd always know it was a full moon. The cause of lunacy or moon madness is still unknown. It is known, however, that the moon controls the tides in the oceans. Since humans are 90% water, perhaps the moon controls our tides, too. Nations have horoscopes as well as people. Since 1840, in the astrological chart of the United States, the alignment of Saturn and Jupiter has reoccurred at 20-year intervals. Unfortunately, every president elected during those periods has died in office. William Henry Harrison, elected 1840, died of pneumonia, 1841. Abraham Lincoln, elected 1860, assassinated 1865. James Garfield, elected 1880, assassinated 1881. William McKinley, elected 1900, assassinated 1901. Warren Harding, elected 1920, died 1923. Franklin Roosevelt, elected 1940, died 1945. John Kennedy, Elected 1960, assassinated 1963. A number of astrologers, including Sidney Omar, saw that President Kennedy's life was in danger. In American astrology, Leslie McIntyre wrote, In the past, 
Such configurations have coincided with personal danger to our head of state. November is obviously fraught with perils. On October 25, 1963, in the British magazine Fate, John Pendragon stated, The President may make powerful enemies among his own people, and I would not rule out the possibility of an attempted assassination or worse if he has caught off his guard. Mr. President, I am deeply concerned for your personal safety and would respectfully urge you to strengthen your bodyguard, especially when you're in the streets and other public places. Astrologers have not always been harbingers of disaster. Many astrologers now believe we have entered the age of Aquarius, an era of growing cooperation among individuals and nations, a time when the noblest aspirations of mankind can be realized. I had a brief telephone conversation with Sidney Omar, and I took some notes on what he told me. He asked me my birth date. I told him it was March 26, 1931. He said, you've spent a year of searching and disillusionment. He said, you tend to become immersed in a part or a mood. That's probably true. He told me I have a powerful personality which tends to make people afraid of me, although I'm actually quite vulnerable. That's flattering. Finally, he said, think mentally of one question. I thought, what's next? And he said, let go. It's finished. You're riding a losing proposition. Take a cold plunge into the future. Let go of the security of the past. Thank you very much, Sydney. I'll keep it in mind. Time will tell. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena. In search of cameras are traveling the world seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians.